how can we continue to grow in our relationship with Christ? There, there, there's something that we have to be aware of when it comes to, to knowing Jesus and following Him. Something that, that, that we understand, but we are limited to. And that's time. That's why it's important that we use it, it wisely. Let me, let me give you some statistics for yourself. You spend less than 1% of your year hearing a message at church. Amen. If you only come on Sundays and you hear a 30 to 45 minute message, you spend 0.4% of your year hearing that word. Show up on Wednesdays, you can double that up and it's 0.8. You spend less than 1% of your year sitting in that seat hearing the word of God and now we're not even getting into the details of what you retain. If you're not taking notes, and maybe you're going to get the CD or something later, but if you're not taking notes, then you're probably only going to retain a minimal amount of information, of knowledge, of understanding, of wisdom, of the Word, when it's ministered. So that less than 1% begins to decrease in your life. So how we use, how we see time is relevant to our lives, and how we use time should be beneficial to our faith, and how we spend time is critical to our spirit. Amen. So, did you know that you spend, that the average person spends 26 years of their life sleeping? You could add another seven if you're like myself at times. <laughs> add another, another seven years just trying to go to sleep. You know what you can do in seven years, church? Think about it. You go to school, you can get your bachelor's degree, you can probably even finish that and go back and get your master's degree. You can work your way up a ladder in a career. There's so many things that you can do in seven years, but we spend 26 years of our life sleeping and seven years of our life trying to go to sleep. Why are you saying that, Eric? Because this is what we're talking about. We're saying that I don't want to allow the darkness of what the enemy is trying to do to pollute my mind and my heart. Why? Because why can't you go to sleep at night? Oh, because I'm worried, Eric. I don't know how the situation's going to pan out. I don't know if this is going to work out for me. I don't really know if God has called me. I'm not really sure about the calling of God. I'm not really sure of what God is trying to tell me. I don't know. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my marriage. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I just don't know. Oh, I got to do this. I got all these things that I need to do that I haven't done yet. I got to get ready. Thanksgiving's coming. I haven't even started. I haven't even started my Christmas shopping. I don't, what am I going to get these? I don't, I don't even like these people in my family. I don't want to get any of them. No. Don't go there. Right? Why? Why? Because we're trying to get to a place of where we're allowing the Holy Spirit to help us, to create in us rest. Amen. Why? Because we don't want to waste time. Amen. The more time we waste on, on things that don't really matter, that's time that we should be spending to grow in our relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Think about it. Let me give you a few more things, okay? One year, we spend 33% of our year sleeping, 24% of our year working, your job or whatever. You spend about 17% of your year with family and your children, which these are these are normal things that we have to do. This is crazy. You spend 8% of your year looking at a screen. It's not funny, Bobby. I love it. I love it. You spend another 8% on just life duties. You know, grocery shopping, you know, you gotta clean the house, there's things you gotta do, you gotta pick up the kids, the grandkids, all these things. So listen, I tallied that up, that's 90% of, of your whole year right there. Guess what's left? Oh, 10%? 10% is left of your year to figure out what you're gonna do to help your spiritual life grow for yourself. I'll tell you what. I cannot be responsible for your spiritual life person. That's right. Amen. Right. Nobody can. That's why you have a unique 
individual relationship with God. I, I can only come up and do my part and share, man, how much God loves you, how he has a purpose and a plan for your life, like Jordan said. Man, I felt like I have purpose. Yeah, you feel like you have purpose because you can't just come to church and just sit here and do nothing. You got to get involved. You got to do something. You got to find out what God has given you, the gifts and talents that God has given you. You got to get those things exposed because why? Because there's work to be done. There's a kingdom to be built while we're here on this earth. There's people outside of these walls, in these walls right now, that are lost, hurting, and broken, that have what you need. The Jesus that's inside of you, that you have, they need it. And I can't reach them, but you can Oh, but I'm so busy. He just said it. I got work. I got to check my Facebook notifications. And oh, I got to see my, the snap. My snap was going off. I'm talking to the younger kids now. My Snapchat was going I got to see who, who was responding to what is going on. And man, you know what, Eric? I'm so busy with my family and my kids. And, my, and, and granted, what did I say? All good things. Yeah. All good things. But I'm trying to help you because some of you, you're concerned about your spiritual well-being. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, do the evaluation yes. and see how much time am I taking, am I spending, am I using to build yes. who I am in Christ yes. up. Yes. Repent, forgive, love, and repeat. Amen. You use your time yes. however you want to use it. But my encouragement to you this morning is that all the time that you have throughout your day, that, that, it's so funny, that 10% that's left, yeah. that 10% that's left after you're sleeping, after you're working, after your family, after your hobbies, after whatever it is you do, that 10%, man, it's, it's a little over two hours in your day. God should be getting some of that. Yeah. And, I, and my prayer is that you're prioritizing your life not to fit God in but to fit everything else into God yeah. All right. All right. that should be the way you use your time why? because the more you grow in your faith in Christ the easier it is for you not to be offended all the time you're saying well, well Eric I get offended all, I get mad all the time and these people just they rub me the wrong way and they shouldn't be telling me that and I'm just telling you right now the reason that you're like that is because you have not grown into who God has called you to be and you don't understand the love that is being re reciprocated from God to you every single day we haven't got to that place yet where we're truly thankful and grateful for the mercy and grace of God Amen. So yet we think that it's okay to act out in who we are yes. and not believe and trust who he's called Amen. us to Ooh, be. Yes. And number two is this space. <laughs> space. And, uh, and it's not space in the sky. It's, 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 it's a literal space. And, and this, is, this is probably my favorite point of this. Actually, they're all good. This is, one of my, this is my favorite point of this message for myself. <coughs> Your words... <coughs> your actions and your attitudes. And I like talking about this because you'll understand what I mean. Every single one of us in here, we occupy different spaces in our lives. We have a space at home that we occupy, maybe as a husband or a wife, maybe as a parent, maybe as a child. We have a space at work that we occupy. We have a space here at church that we occupy. And your words and your actions and your attitudes matter in every single space that you occupy. This is very important to understand. Because I think a lot of the times we think that the only time I need to look like Jesus is here. Come on, hello. Come on. Amen. The only, time, the only time I need my, my words to be right and my actions to be right and my attitudes to be right is when I show up to church. Just because you're not in the space where everyone expects you to be like Jesus doesn't mean you shouldn't be like Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, you leave this place and you go home and you tell yourself, well, I don't have to be like Jesus here. And then you're hanging out with your church friends and you're saying, well, here I probably got to be like Jesus, but I'm not hanging out with my church friends anymore, so I don't got to be like Jesus anymore. And your 
words and your actions and your attitudes will define who you are mm -hmm. throughout your day. Come on. Every single day. Yes, amen. I'm at work and I don't really need to be like Jesus at work because I don't like the people that I work with. <laughs> the people that I come in contact with. Amen. And then I go back home and I'm with my wife. And she upset me. So I don't need to be like Jesus around her. Amen. But then yet I go back to work and I'm all around my boss and I treat my boss better than I treat my wife. And I give more time and I give more effort to my work and what I'm doing in my career and I give more <coughs> energy to that than I give it to my own marriage. Because I've already become familiar with that. And I've allowed that familiarity to dwell inside of me. And so there, once again, there's things that have already happened in my marriage and in my past. And there's things that they've wronged me in. And so I'm going to hold those things. I'm going to hold them hostage with those yes. things. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the enemy will lie to you. And he'll tell you, you see what they did to you? Mm -hmm. Come on now. The way that you remember this? Mm -hmm. Remember that? And you'll begin to believe it. You'll begin to say, yeah, you're right. I do remember that. And God is saying, no, no, don't, 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 don't. Follow me. Walk in love. Stay with me. Be pure. Be holy. Be sanctified. I saved you. Don't be like that. Walk in every space that you walk in. I show them Jesus. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't matter where you're at. Every single space that you occupy. You better look like Jesus. God is saying, look. Stop making life about you. Amen. It's not about you. Come it's on. about me. It's about what I've done and what I'm doing. It's about my purpose while you're here on this earth. It's about everything that needs to get done. But you're making it about you. So all the spaces that you occupy at home and at work and with your friends and with your Christian friends and whatever. You need to continue to look like Jesus in every single space that you occupy. Because that's what I've called you to. Church, you, you have the potential to add value to every space you occupy. Come on. So occupy every space with Jesus. Amen. It, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. You cannot go wrong. When you feel, when you feel your flesh and when you feel yourself begin to rise up and beginning, begin to want to be a certain way, that's that moment. That's that moment where God's going to occupy your heart and your mind and your soul. That's that moment where you got to rely on the Holy Spirit. That's that moment where you got to backtrack and, 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 and then call back that prayer that you prayed six hours ago in the morning because you're at the end of your day and your energy's running out and you're tired and you're getting frustrated and angry and you got to call back to what you said, God, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Please, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to react this way. I want to occupy this space with God's love just because I'm tired, just because I'm frustrated, just because I'm angry doesn't give me a right to be the person that I don't want to be anymore. I want to be yeah. who you called me to be. God, so I'm not an occupier. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Because you are, you guys know we're there. Yeah. You get to the end of your work day and you just come across that person and you're already tired and you're fatigued and your mind is fatigued and your energy is low and your decision making abilities are not as good as they were when you got there in the morning and had your coffee and your donut. It's just not there. Come on. Come on. So it's in that moment, right? Yeah. It's in that moment. In the, be in, the, in the beginning, you're like, yeah, I just prayed, and God is strengthening my life, and I just got my coffee here, and I got my donut here, and I feel good about what I'm doing. I got the praise and worship music going out in my car. Yes, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Yes, Lord. And I'm just like, I know what God has done in my life. Hey, brother, God loves you. But four hours later, six hours later, oh, the end of the day is coming. Your hair's all messed up. You don't have any more coffee. The caffeine ran out, and all you have to do is rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to get you through your day. But I gotta choose. You gotta choose. You gotta make that decision every single day of how you are gonna occupy the spaces that you live in, that you dwell in, that you go to. Last one is this. And this is a I love this one. And, and, and I like this because this is something that, that we have to think of more often in our lives than less of our lives. And we 
we don't because unlike time, which we understand and which comes and goes and we know that we can't get back, eternity is forever. And it's hard to wrap our minds around that. But I love what the scripture teaches us about eternity when it says, since then you have been raised with Christ, Colossians 1, Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Let me say that one more time. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Amen. How you live matters. And what you speak matters. Yes. And once again, the attitudes that you portray, they matter. And the words that come out of your mouth, the life and death is in the power of your tongue. And you already know it, that words yes. matter. Yes. Words can either build up or they can break down. And you know this, church. Yes. But what we fail to realize is that we have to think eternally in this thing. Yeah. That the things that we're doing, they're echoing into eternity. Yeah. That the choices and decisions and everything that we do and the things that we say and the attitudes yeah. that we portray and the way that we live, they matter. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're never thinking that we're only thinking, we're limited to the way we think at times yeah. because we're just thinking that this is the only life that I have. Come on. Yeah. That this is the only life that I have. We're not thinking that there's an eternity ahead of us. Nor are we thinking that the seeds that I'm planting today are going yeah. to echo into eternity Amen. for the rest of our lives. Yeah. And so we're not thinking that, man, what I say has power. Amen. And what I say continues to float. Amen. And what I do has repercussions. Amen. And the way I live and the way I act and the attitudes that I have, all those things matter because... We're not thinking eternally the way God has called us to think. So for me, this is what I think. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to this, this place. Is I'm trying to tell myself every single day that we don't have much time on this earth. That the time that I have is very valuable. And that I need to use it to glorify God, to build His kingdom, and to help others. I need to, I need to use it. I, I, my heart is heavy. For people, you guys know this. Yeah. I'm saying for this church. Our heart is heavy for people. Mm. But all these things that I just said mm. are things that last forever. Yeah. Man, the way you love someone, the way you care for someone, the words that you speak to someone. Yeah. It works in reverse. You some of you can you can go back in your lives and you can remember a decade, two decades ago yes. of what someone told you that really hurt you. Whoa. All right. yeah. You can recount that memory. It's so funny. You can even, even get to that place to where it made you feel what it made you feel like. Mm -hmm. That situation, that moment, that season yeah. of your life. It's the same thing when it comes to the Word of God. Yeah. You speak the Word of God and you speak love and you speak truth. Mm -hmm. You love one another the way Christ has called you to love yeah, one another. Yeah. That goes and echoes into eternity. So yeah. I want to leave you with this. Start thinking eternally. Stop thinking limited with just the time we're here. Yeah. Church, if you have children and you have grandchildren, there's a possibility that those grandchildren are going to have kids. And there's a possibility that their kids are going to have kids. So what you do right now matters for them tomorrow. Amen. The way you speak right now matters for them in the future. Yeah. The way you live and the way you see you live and the way, the way you act and the attitudes that you portray, they watch you and that is going to affect yeah. them in the future. Yeah. Amen. So I'm telling you that it's not about you. Amen. That your life Echoes into all of eternity. Yes. And you have to be very, very careful and sensitive. You have purpose and God has a plan. Yes. There, there, there's a reason why God orchestrates things the way he does. Our job is to be obedient, to be sensitive. Life is short, time is limited. Man, but obeying Jesus echoes into eternity.
there's a reward. Oh, there's a reward at the end of our lives. But man, I'm, I'm here right now. And this is the space that I'm occupying. And this is the time that I'm using. And look, one day you're going to wake up. And you're going to tell yourself, gosh, man, I, I wasted so much time. I let so much time go by. I wasn't even taking advantage of the time that I have. And I've been there before. I've done that. I've, I've wasted time. Wasted time on things that didn't even matter. And, and, and I'll give you an example. Being offended. I've wasted time on allowing offense and anger and bitterness to get deep rooted inside me. Not for a long time, but I have wasted time allowing that to sit. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I could have used all that time to be doing something good for God's kingdom. I could have been using all that time to have been loving on each other and ministering to each other. God, uh, there, there's probably all kinds of opportunities where God was giving me to be used by Him, but I couldn't see it because I was so blinded 